Here, it's a great event for all people working in, uh, in optics in the world. Uh, you know, family like to, to gather together, and for family, there are uh, wonderful events, and there are also sad moments. And I would like to share with you a few seconds about a sad event. Yvan Lorgeret, who is working in Laboratoire et Mécoton in France, and a chemist uh, with a colleague were in the flight Air France 447, uh, which crashed uh, two days ago in the Atlantic. And uh, I think as a family of optics, we can think to him as a wonderful colleague working in, who was working in optics. Okay, as physicists, we know that in sad moments or uh, any kind of moment, we, it's better to go back to what we love, and what we love is physics, so let's go to physics. And uh, I must say that when I got this invitation to give a plenary talk at this wonderful conference, I was, of course, delighted, but a little bit surprised when the chairs asked me to talk on a subject on which I was working 35 years ago. After a second thought, uh, I came to the conclusion that uh, they were probably right, because if I look into what I'm still doing nowadays, I'm still chasing the weirdness of quantum physics, and this weirdness of quantum physics started with the story I'm going to tell you now. I think I can move, yes, it's better. Okay, so the story starts, like many stories in modern physics, with Einstein. We all know that Einstein has a strange position uh, for quantum physics. On the one hand, he can really be considered one of the major founders with the introduction of the light quantum, but we all know that rapidly he opposed not quantum physics itself, but the interpretation which was given by the so-called Copenhagen School. And among his many discussions with Niels Bohr, one has survived, and it's still very important. It's the objection that was done with colleagues Podolsky and Rosen in a famous paper that was published in 1935, and which is easy to download from Prola, which is very nice. And in this paper, he introduced the notion of pairs of entangled particles. And this objection to the current interpretation of quantum mechanics was underestimated until uh, a new player comes on the stage, and this player was John Bell. And John Bell allowed, really, to make a big step. And this is what I'm going to tell you about. And at the end of my talk, I will tell you how all this conceptual discussion is now, uh, has now developed on uh, the field known as quantum information. So what is a question that Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen were asking at that time? It's the following question. You all know, of course, that quantum mechanics is doing probabilistic prediction. And the question raised by Einstein is the following. Does it mean that there is an underlying structure, an underlying description, more accurate, and that we need to go to a probabilistic description just to have a kind of average description, just like statistical physics is related to elementary mechanics, okay? And uh, this question was fascinating Einstein, and in the paper of 1935, he thought that he had demonstrated that you absolutely need to introduce this underlying description, and Bohr immediately disagreed, and the discussion didn't go very far until Bell came on the stage so let us see what is it about. This is a version for optics people, and we are all optics people, of the Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen situation. We have a pair of photons, nu1 and nu2, emitted at the same time. And on each of these photons, we are going to make a measurement of the polarization. So here we have, for instance, a Volaston, uh, uh, Volaston apparatus or polarization beam splitter. And if the photon is polarized along the direction A, it will go out in the channel plus one. If it is polarized perpendicular to A, it will go out in channel minus one. 
Similarly, on photon U2, we make a measurement along the direction B, and if it is polarized along B, goes in plus one, perpendicular goes into minus one. And then we repeat the experiment, we launch many pairs, and we do statistics. So we measure probability to get result plus one or minus one in orientation A. More interesting, we are going also to measure joint probabilities. That is to say, the probability to guess plus one here and plus one here for orientation A and B. And this will be what we are going to measure here. So at this stage, nothing special, no ancient polosky rosen yet. Uh -huh. Doesn't want to go. Is my computer sleeping? Okay, now, thank you. So now, Einstein, Polosky, Rosen. Let's suppose we can create this state of polarization. You see x is this direction, y is perpendicular to the screen. And so we have this stage, which means here would be polarized along x, and here would be two photons polarized along y. And einstein polosky rosen state is a state which is a superposition of two photons polarized along x and two photons polarized along y. It's an elementary exercise in quantum mechanics to calculate the various probabilities of finding plus one, minus one, or joint probability if you start with such a state. And when you do correctly your exercise, you find that single probabilities are just one half, which means that this photon looks like unpolarized. You have 50% chance to find this polarization or the perpendicular one, whatever the orientation. And the same for the second photon. So each photon separately looks totally unpolarized. unpolarized. But if you look, if you calculate correctly the joint probability, you find that it depends on the angle between the orientations of the two polarizers. And you find actually that there is a strong correlation between the results here and there. Take, for instance, a case where the angle between the two polarizers is zero. So you measure along the same direction of polarization. Then this formula tells you that the joint probability P plus plus equals one half. And this is a total correlation. And if you are not yet convinced that it is a total correlation, I'll just show you in detail. The single detection probability here is one half. So probability to get plus one is one half. But the joint probability is also one half, which means that the conditional probability to get plus on the second side, when you have gotten plus on the first side, this conditional probability is 100%. If you are not yet totally convinced, P plus minus equals zero, which means that if you find plus one here, you are sure not to find minus one here. So what we get from this calculation is when this photon arrives here, you have 50% chance to find here, 50% chance here. Here, 50% chance, 50% chance. But if you get plus one, you are sure to get plus one on the other side. If you get minus one, you are sure to get minus one on the other side. So it's highly correlated random variables. Uh -huh. Now goes too fast. Back, okay, thank you. So we are scientists and we need to have quantitative quantities. And for this, we define the coefficient of correlation. And the coefficient of correlation is defined in a classical way. I have a random variable, I have another random variable. What is the coefficient of correlation? It's the average of the product minus the product of the average, and you normalize. And when you do that, you find that it is the sum of the plus plus and minus minus result minus the sum of the plus minus and minus plus results, okay? And when you plug into this classical definition the prediction of quantum mechanics for an EPR state, you get cosine of two times the angle between the polarizer. And if the angle is zero, you find indeed that the predicted correlation is 100%, is total. 